Welcome everyone to another Dynamics 365 training session. I am your uh, presenter host and one of the CRM consultants at CRM Dynamics. Feel free to take down my contact information anytime you can send me an email if you have any additional questions afterwards. Um, if I can help you out I certainly will or I'll point you in the right direction. Also, feel free to visit our website and take a peek at past webinars located in our academy, uh, Learning Academy portal. You can also sign up for upcoming webinars, and we're going to be covering topics like gamification, editable grids, uh, and Power BI. So certainly uh, check those out and register. If you're feeling extra social, uh, you be sure to engage with one of our live chat agents, and they'll be happy to help you out as well. Okay, so going back to cover our topics here, we're going to be looking at the admin portal, so what it looks like when you're adding users, assigning licenses, looking into additional subscriptions, and add-ons. Additionally, we'll go over a few new security rule features that you should be aware of, and then we'll finish off with just some fun tips and tricks on some of the new capabilities within Dynamics 365. So now I'll go back into the environment now that you guys can hear me. This here is my admin center. To sign on, you can just go to portal.office.com and you'll see here up in the address bar and that'll uh, ask you to sign in with your credentials and then if you do have access to this, you will be able to open up the admin center. Now just a note on the version I'm going to be using today, so I'm actually um, utilizing an online trial version of Dynamics 365, so I certainly encourage those of you who may not be on it yet to test out a trial, you know, play around in the updated platform, and you can request this 30-day trial from Microsoft. I'll provide a link in the chat area and you can copy and paste that into your browser. Also, if you just do an online search of Dynamics 365 trial, you should have the link up there as well. Okay, so getting back into things, we'll look at my admin center here. On the home page, you can see that I have multiple areas such as the user management, some billing, other software management over here, as well as domains, and then some various analytics. On the left side here, this is really your uh, menu options, and I just want to point out sometimes it's collapsed, so you can expand this to actually get at the details instead of just seeing the icons. So I'm going to run through some of the areas within here, um, starting with your users. So again, you can access from here or, of course, here on my home page. The drop-down allows me to look at active users, guest users, if there's been any deleted users. So I'm going to go into my active users list here. And you can see that. Now, before I get into adding um, additional users and assigning licenses, I do want to also show you the billing area on the left here. And for those of you that may not have the subscriptions yet um, and the licenses, this is where you'll start because that's where you can purchase those services. So I'm going to go into billing and subscriptions. And you'll notice here that I clearly already have some available in my account. Looking at the title, it's a Plan 1 Enterprise Edition. There are multiple uh, licenses or subscriptions available now with this new Dynamics 365. So be sure to talk to either Microsoft Rep, Rep or one of our agents here at Serum Dynamics. Uh, we can help you out to decide which one is best for you and your users and organization. So just looking at some of the details here, you can see that under the licenses, it shows me how many I have available, so 25. But then it also shows that I've assigned two of them. So now I have 23 available, of course. You can buy um, additional ones as well as additional subscriptions. Going back to my active list on the left here, you can also see I have a Power BI one. So this is just another subscription or license that I've purchased on this account, which again just gives me the details of what it's for, how many licenses I have available, and how many have actually been assigned out. So in this case, I only have one that's been assigned, meaning I have 24 more to assign to users I add. 
If you want to buy additional ones, you can either click the Add Subscriptions up here or in the left side menu, Purchase Services. So I'm going to go Add Subscriptions just to show you what some of these um, areas look like. You'll notice now that I've clicked that, I'm in the Purchase Services area. And there's quite a few things to look at. Now, what you can um, assign to your users is based on what app that they're going to access. So with Dynamics 365, they're referred to as apps. So these are your different menu areas in the CRM system itself. So many of you might already deal in sales, marketing, service, and now there's project service automation and field services. So that's why you'll see these different label names here, like project service automation. That means it's given the access to that specific app. So it's unlike uh, previous versions where you just see the whole menu, you can actually give it to just designated apps. Like if you were only having salespeople, you could just give them the sales app subscription. So there's quite a few you can look through here, depending on the suites, as well as additional uh, Microsoft suites. So, you know, looking at Office 365, those types of, you know, Outlook, Word, all those Office programs. Um, there's some Exchange, some SharePoint uh, pieces in here, as well as Skype for Business. So it's really your whole management, um, software management, including the, the CRM subscriptions. So I'm just going to go back to some other options under Billing. I'm going to click on Licenses. It's very similar to the other um, subscriptions page that we looked at, and it's really just listing the licenses you have purchased and just showing it in a grid form where it says how many are valid, if there's any that have expired, because um, you can get, you know, pay a year in advance, and if you don't renew them, then they can expire, and again, just showing how many have been assigned out. Billing notifications. This just notes who would receive those uh, invoices and renewal reminders. So right now you can see it's, I have myself up here. If I had additional users that I've assigned either global administrator access or even billing access, which we'll get into afterwards, they would be listed here as well. So let's go back into the users. And let's go look at the active users. Just going to pause for a minute and remove my go to screen here. There we go. Okay, so you can see right now that I have two active users. Gives their username and their status, which usually refers to the subscriptions or licenses that they've been um, assigned. So if I click on one of them, let's say Doug Johnson here, you can already see some of the information uh, regarding his account. You can also change and edit some of these um, details, so if you ever needed to edit the username, like what's showing in front here, um, product licenses, if you're dealing with groups, um, sign-in status, which we'll go over as well, um, and then different roles. So let's start by adding a new user and going through these different areas. To add a user, it's pretty simple. Add up here or add down here. Sorry, if my mouse is going around the place, I'm just moving one of the uh, webinar screens out of the way. So we're going to add a new user. This user's name is Sarah. Gibbsy. Now, when I tab off of this, you'll notice that the display name automatically populates just based on the first last name, but if you want to, you can change this. The username, so this is what they would use to sign in. If they don't already have a 365 account, this is where you're creating it, otherwise it would link to the existing one that's in there. So I'm just going to stick with standard format, Sarah.Gibbsy. You can select which location they're in, and you can also input contact information if you'd like, but it's not mandatory. Expanding the password area, you'll notice that by default it will auto-generate passwords, so that when I finish creating this user, it'll email that out, 
And then you can see there's another option down here that says make the user change their password when they first sign in. So that means they'll get sent that auto-generated password upon their first sign in. It'll say you need to change this and then they can set it. You also have the option though to create your own. So if there's some uh, standard that we, you like to follow, you can put that in here. And then you can also uncheck this so that they don't have to um, change their password. If users forget their password, um, it's a matter of resetting it. So it's not that um, you as an admin go in and um, tell them what their password is. You would actually just push another reset and they can go through the same where you either auto-generate one, um, provide them one, and then also select whether they have to change it upon their first sign-in. So this case, sorry, I'm just going to auto-generate. Then we're going to go to roles. This refers to the type of role they would have within my whole 365 environment, not just specifically to the CRM piece. So user, meaning there's no administrative access, so whatever licenses and security roles I assign to them in the system, that's it. Global administrator, this would be someone um, like the role that I'm signed in as right now, where they can access all features in the admin center, assign licenses, purchase subscriptions, and so forth. You also have the option, though, for Customize Administrator, and this is great when there's someone you want to just designate for certain areas of the admin portal, so like the billing administrators, so they would be involved in the billing pieces, subscriptions, so forth, but they wouldn't have access to delete users, per se. Same with, like, Password Administrator. Okay, they can reset passwords and send those out, but they wouldn't have access to all the areas within. So it's a neat way to just give um, other users just specific areas to access within the whole 365 admin piece. For this one, user, I'm going to just give them user so there's no admin access, meaning if they sign into their portal, they would actually not have access to the background pieces here that we're looking at today. Then we get to the product licenses. So here you'll see it's showing me what licenses I currently have available on my um, 365 account. So of course there's the Power BI and it shows me I have 24 of 25 available so I can assign that out just by clicking the on or off. Same with the 365, um, the CRM licenses. I have 23 of 25 to assign so I'm going to give her that. You'll notice here because of the type of Plan 1 uh, Enterprise Edition I have, I have other options available to me. So again, depending on the subscription um, that your organization has purchased, these might not all be available to a sign out, but for this sample, I'm just going to leave these all on. You can also create your users without assigning a product license here. So let's say you know you have some people onboarding in the next month or so, and you just want to get a head start, create the user records, but not assign them anything. You have that option here as well, just so that when they do um, come on and will want access to the 365 environment, you can come back in and then just edit what you assign to them. And that's pretty much it for creating a user. You just go add. It says the user was added, gives their information. It shows you the tentative password right here that they're going to be sent. And that will be sent in an email. And you can also copy um, other recipients on this as well. So by default, it includes the person creating it, which is myself right now. But you could also include another um, IT manager if necessary. Keep in mind, though, we selected that they have to change their password upon sign-in. So even though we have this tentative one, when the user clicks it to do their first sign-in, they will be changing their password themselves. I'm just going to take a quick look. I had a couple questions coming in on that. Now, what if they lock themselves out? Is that you mean that they don't, I'm assuming they don't remember their password or something like that? Um, and you would have someone that could reset their, their password. I'll also show you some of the, the security setting pieces uh, in here because there are additional options that you can set up for password resets and allowing users to change their passwords manually, um, but it does involve, I think, the Azure, um, Azure subscription as well. So we'll, I will show you that area as well. So we've set up Sarah here. I can send the email and close. I can add other users after this or edit details of that user. So I'm just going to send email and close. You'll notice in the background now, Sarah's been added to my active user list. 
So now that I've added a new user and I've assigned a license, there's still one more step you have to remember to do so that when they sign in to the CRM platform, they can actually access it. So although I've assigned a license here, remember that we'll have to go into the actual um, 365 environment and give them a security role that defines what they can access. Because right now, if Sarah signed in, she'd be able to do her login, but then she'd be met with a screen that says, um, there's been no security role assigned, and contact your system administrator. So she'd come back to you and say, hey, I don't have access, please assign security role. And then you'd have to go into the system to do that. Okay. Moving on to another area in the admin portal. Just to um, show you support, right now, because I'm in trial version, I just have the option to do some support searches where it just gives me um, additional resources or if I want to um, have someone contact me. Certain clients, depending on what support you have, this is also where you could log um, your support tickets with a Microsoft agent. Let me see if I have to refresh here. Sorry, it's not loading the screen. It's because this is hiding it. There we go. So it just has a pop out here. Um, and you can search on certain topics, but then you'll also see in this area here that uh, you can contact them as well. So they want you to do your own search first to see if you can find something. But otherwise, if you can't, they can contact you. Again, though, you can also create support tickets from here if you have that option. Moving into the settings area, services and add-ins. These are additional add-ins um, into your 365 environment. So by all means, please take a look. Um, there's everything from office store pieces, um, docs, if there's Cortana enabled for your organization, um, different types of authentication pieces. So these would be located here. And most likely your IT department would be part of this. Security and privacy. So this is where you can set a few other additional options where I was mentioning in regards to passwords. So see here by default password policy, I have um, about two years uh, before the passwords expire. So if you require users to update their passwords uh, sooner than this, you can actually edit it and change how many days before it expires, as well as the notification email they would get from the system saying your password's gonna expire in 14 days or you can have it uh, be sooner. So that's where you can set some of those um, password policies. I was mentioning um, allowing users to reset their own passwords. So there's a section down here, um, you can check it out, but again, it does uh, require the Azure AD Admin Center. Um, so it's another add-on that you'd have to have um, in terms of subscriptions to access that. Otherwise, you are going in and just resetting the password in the system, emails out that notification with the either auto-generated password or the one that you've put in. Domains, pretty self-explanatory here. It just lists out the domains that you currently have. You can add or um, add domains you already own or, of course, buy additional ones. So these are um, what would be part of your actual CRM URL as well as your sign-in or your login details. So one of the important pieces of the admin portal is also this admin centers option down here. And you'll notice, based on some of the subscriptions and apps that I currently have access to, there's a few, because there's different admin centers for each. I'm interested in the Dynamics 265 one, previously CRM. And what this does, it opens up another tab, and I get to the 365 admin center. What this lists is any 365 instances I have, as well as their type. So if you have both a sandbox and production, this is where they would list them. This is also where you could see updates that are um, currently scheduled for your instances. So if I had this on, I had any updates, it would have a warning over here. You'll also notice in the tabs above, there's an updates tab. 
and you'll see here, it'll show you any status. So if there was one scheduled, it would show me the date, but I would also have the option to uh, reschedule that if you needed it at a later date. So this is basically where you manage your instances, but you also get some analytics from it too. So you can see you have your service health, um, if there's anything or warnings that need to be looked at, as well as the storage usage. So note that you do get five gigabytes um, storage. This is shared though between the instances that you have. So if you have a sandbox as well as a production, the five gigabytes is a total for both. It's not that each instance gets five gigabytes, it's your total um, together is five gigabytes, so just keep that in mind, um, especially if you have data that's in both instances, that you're really doubling um, your storage. I have a few questions coming in here, so um, don't worry, I will answer them. I'll just wait till the end of the session and I'll cover all those off. So going back to my instances, I can actually open up the CRM from here by just clicking open and it'll launch right into this. For those of you who may not be on Dynamics 365 yet, the menu items will look a bit different, which we will go through. First and foremost though, I do want to look at just some of the new security role pieces that you should be made aware of. So. I'm a system administrator within this CRM. Going to settings and security, I just want to open up one of the security roles to show you some of the new additions to the security um, editing page. So I'll just open up, let's say, the salesperson role here. Looks pretty similar. Now what you want to note though is there's a couple new tabs here. Business process flows being one, missing entities, and then when we go to custom entities, you'll see there's uh, quite a list of them already. So, custom entities. This is where any custom entities you create will show up, so you will have to edit the security access per role for those, but you'll also see, um, don't be scared from the list that you already see here, because this is part of some of the new additions that were made um, to the Dynamics 365 update and it just refers to some of the other apps and the entities that they use. There's also some missing entities here. Again, you shouldn't have to touch much, much of this. By default, it should be fine. The business process flows, though, is quite new. Now, what this is, is you need to think of the business process flows you create as their own entities. So you'll see here in this salesperson role, I clearly have access to the lead to opportunity sales process. Um, the opportunity sales process. So if you are creating any new business process flows, you have to then update the roles, security roles that you want to have access to them so that you can allow that. So it's a bit different, whereas in older versions within the actual business process flow, you could just say which roles get access to it. Whereas this one, you're actually editing the security role itself to allow them to access it. So that's why I'm saying you need to think about these, each business process flow you create as their own entity. They show up here in this list. They will also show up in the default solution screen. So you'll notice if you're customizing a system, I'm going to exit out of this security role. I'm going to go to settings and customizations. I'm going to open up my customization screen here. I'm going to expand my entities, and I'm going to scroll down to leads. I'll make this a bit bigger for you to view. Notice I have my lead entity, and I now have this lead to opportunity sales process. So again, that's the business process flow that you've created. A couple new things I do want to point out as well with Dynamics 365. 
In your top corner, this does act like your home page, uh, very similar to those who may have their logo up here, where if you click it, it goes to whatever home page you've set, which is usually a dashboard, but it can be another area. And each user can set that in their personal options. But if you go to the drop down beside it, it lists out your apps. Again, the terminology in terms of apps with Dynamics 365 is really referring to the areas of access of your menu items. So you can see here I have sales, field services um, new as well as project service automation, and customer service. So if I did my uh, menu drop down similar to this, it all looks the same, but when they're referring to apps, that's really what they're referring to. So sales app, service app, there's some project service ones, as well as the field service ones. Again, what you see in these menu items will depend on the subscription that your user has been applied and then what access in terms of security as well. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click on my home because this is slightly different as well. I'm going to my three, Dynamics 365 home page and it's listing all the apps that I have access to. Reason being, I can go into what I was just in and see all the apps that I have in terms of subscription access. So that again was sales, service, field service, project service automation. Or I can go right into the, to the specific app such as sales. So for example, I have this sales one over here. I'm going to click that. Very similar, I'm getting to my homepage dashboard. Note the difference though when I do a drop down. I only have the sales marketing pieces available to me. I don't see service, I don't see field service or any of those additional menu options. So anyone who gets just the sales subscription, this is what they see. And again, I can go to this drop down, I'll try customer service. You'll notice it goes to service. If I look at the drop down, I'm only seeing what's referred to as the service apps and then of course the settings training will be available for all. For those of you that have a plan one or full access subscription, you may get something that says um, Dynamics 365 custom. In this case, I have it relabeled as Dynamics 365 Learning Academy and I'll show you how you can do that. So see here, I've gone into my app And instead of selecting the specific one, I'm going to the overall Dynamics 365. I'll show you my menu option. I now have all of these available to me. If you go into settings and go into administration, within system settings, so this is where you can set a lot of the default system settings. But if you scroll to the bottom within this general tab, You'll see the last piece here says default app name. And again, this is usually Dynamics 365 dash custom, but you can change the label. And in this case, I called it Learning Academy. You just go OK. And then that's what changes it when you go to your home page for your apps. So again, I'm clicking this drop down. I go home. It lists out my apps, and you can see the one that I've relabeled. Additionally, you can pin certain apps that you access frequently to this top page here. And it's just by clicking the three dots here. So if I go pin this app, puts it up here, and it's just a quicker access area for me. For the most part, users will have just one or two apps available here. But in this case, because I'm accessing all of them, I'm seeing them all here. Also, if you again have a production and a sandbox instance, you will have an app for each. So this page can start to grow and it looks like it's duplicated, but in the grayish text underneath the app label, it'll tell you if it's CRM, like in this case CRMD, I only have a production, but it'll tell you if it's sandbox as well. So it's one thing to keep in mind if you have access to both instances, that this page and your apps, they'll look like they're duplicated, but it's really because one goes into the sandbox and one goes into production. And that's really when you can start just pinning the ones you access. So the production ones pinned to the top, the sandbox ones you can just access um, within this area here when you need to. Now when you're customizing apps, there's something else you need to know as well. 
So let's say you do have full access such as this where you can go into service, you can go into field service, project service automation and sales. So again, I'm going into my custom one which has access to all. And let's say you create a custom entity because we know a lot of people do that. I'll show you in my sales drop down and they're usually at the far right here under extensions. See I have this custom entity called sales stage history. And this is just something that captures some of the sales stage history. It's a component that we have. So it shows up here under sales again. But let's say I have users who I've only assigned a sales subscription to because that's the only area they need to access and it's slightly cheaper. So in their case, when they're looking at their apps and they're going into just sales, again, they are met with the sales menu, looks the same, but notice how my custom entity is not showing up here. I have no extension on the right here and I don't have access to that custom entity. Now that can be kind of a pain because you have to add it to this, but it's also quite a nice feature that's been added because you can edit this sitemap quite easily. So I'm going to go into settings, customizations. I'm going to open up that customize a system window. And you're going to notice at the bottom there's this apps section now. Notice how it's listing each individual app. I'm going to open up sales and it launches into this app designer. High level, this is really just what entities, views and such are available within the sales app. Notice at the top though, there's this lovely sitemap area. So, if I open up the sitemap designer, you'll see that I have those menu options um, from the system and I can actually edit this now. So, for those of you that maybe only use a few sections, um, areas within your CRM system, you can remove all the stuff that you don't need to see on the screen, make it nice and clean and less confusing for your users. Also though, that custom entity that I had initially created, I need to add it to the sitemap so that it shows up. And I can add it to wherever I want, which is great. I want to add it underneath this customer section, or maybe sales in this case. We'll go under sales, going over to the right here on the component side. I'm just going to drag this subgroup or sub area underneath. And then I get to select the options over here. So I'm going to say, okay, what entity is this? And I'm going to look up that sales stage history one, the custom one I had created. And you'll see here now it's underneath. I can save this, do a publish, because right now it's in the draft state. And then I'm going to close out of this. Now I may have to refresh my screen, so again you can use the refresh button in your browser or I always use the F5 key, it's very refreshing. Now let's see if it's shown up. going into sales, and there we go, there's my custom entity. During that time, if I wanted to clean up, like let's say I didn't want these visible and I just removed them, they wouldn't be showing up here as well. So again, it's a great way to clean up this menu, especially if there's certain users um, that you know only need to access and see certain areas. This is a great way to clean that up. Now I mentioned I'd be providing a few links um, within the chat box. I'm just going to put those in for you right now while I also look at the questions. So the first one is a link to requesting that uh, free trial from Microsoft. 
There's also one in there if you need additional um, administrative resources. So it's a great uh, link and you can go through some of the, the areas that we've gone through, get additional help and training pieces from Microsoft. So I'm just going to mute for a second. I'm going to look at all the questions that have come in. If you're looking for more information, especially about the licensing and the other general inquiries, please be sure to contact Brendan. His contact information is up on the screen. Some of the new capabilities in Dynamics 365 are the field service and project service automation. So if you are curious about those, if you're looking for a demo, just more information, be sure to contact Pierre, and his contact information is up there as well. <laughs>